I have a Sony XBR 55X 930D that is not turning on. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to diagnose the correct defective board and how to fix it on a component level. There's gonna be a little bit of soldering involved. If you don't have soldering equipment or don't know how to solder, don't worry, keep following along for the diagnostic and I'll have a mail-in option available in the description. Plugging in the TV right now, typically after a few seconds. Uh, it does take a few seconds, but we should be seeing our standby light. Let me hit the power button as well. Let's take a look. And we still have nothing. And that is what we expected. Something else you can do is take a look at your optical lights. There is supposed to be a red light in there if everything's working properly. And right now it is not lit. So I'm not getting any power over here. Using the multimeter, we're gonna do a few voltage checks. So I am in DC volts. We're gonna use the chassis as our ground. And taking a look, I wanna make sure that my power brick is at least sending power to the TV. So just making contact here, it looks like we have a steady 24 volts. All right. Um, then what I can do is I can make sure that this board over here is also outputting the 24 volts. If I test this test point right here, it should be the 24 volt line output. And I still do have that 24 volt output. So I know that this board is sending the correct voltage to our DPS board. All right, so probing all of the wires going from the DPS board to the main board, not a single one of these lines has any voltages whatsoever. So what that tells us is our voltage stops at the DPS board and the main board is not even getting power. I just unplugged the TV from power and I've switched my multimeter over to beep mode. So when my leads detect a short, it beeps. Now let's take a look at the DPS board. Uh, zooming in a little closer here, there's a few things on the top right corner that we want to focus on. The first thing we're going to do is look at our fuse right over here. It's very small and we're going to make sure it's shorted. And it is. A shorted fuse is a good fuse, so that's good news. And then the other part that I want to check is this IC chip right here. It is known to fail and short out. One way we can easily find if it is shorted is actually by checking the three capacitors to the right over here. And those three capacitors are shorted. That means we have a bad IC chip right here that'll need to be replaced. I'm going to get started by adding a little bit of solder to all of my pins just to make it easier for desoldering when I'm going in with the hot air. And add a little flux. So this is gonna be my replacement IC. And if you take a look at the bottom, there is a ground pad. So I can't use just the soldering iron. I do have to use hot air for this type of repair. Okay, it looks like the solder is flowing on the pins. And right now we're at 320 degrees. The machine is still actually rising up to temperature. I have it set to 450, I believe. And let me see. Yep, so I just lift it off. Go ahead and turn that off. Move this out of the way, and I'm gonna quickly try to grab some of that solder while it's molten. And one thing we'll do is get those pads coated with a little extra solder. Okay, I'm gonna clean up the old flux residue that's left over. We'll wanna go ahead and put some new fresh flux on there. And then we're gonna line up our new chip. All right, and the IC is not perfectly placed right now, but that's okay. What's gonna happen is once I have the solder at a melting point, it'll actually bring the chip exactly to where it needs to be. I think we're reaching the melting point. 
Okay, that should be enough. And I'm just gonna touch up some of the pins with a little bit of extra solder. Some of the flux did already burn away, so I'm gonna add just a little more. It's a little bit tricky because we have a lot of capacitors and resistors very close to all of those pins, so you have to be very careful. I'm gonna rotate the board a little bit so I can get a better angle. Yeah, the camera is actually kinda of getting a little bit in the way for the soldering, but we'll make it work here. All right, yeah, I think that should be good. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup. And I'm just using 99.99% alcohol here. It should all evaporate in a second. Yep. Now that the chip is installed, we're gonna do another short check. So again, in beep mode, when my leads touch, that's the short and that beeps. So let's check those capacitors and we do not have a short anymore. So that means the short is gone. We have taken care of the issue and we can plug the board back into the TV. I just reinstalled the DPS board and looking at our output voltage to the main board, we are now getting our 24 volt output and also 3.4 volt. Let's plug it in and see what we get. Let's see. So I don't actually have a stand, oh. Here we go, it just turned on itself. Okay, so we have the Sony logo, the stand, there we go. Now the standby light is actually turning on, so it looks like it does take a second for it to appear. And then I just wanna show you as well that optical light down over here is showing a, a red light there as well. So that's another indicator that we're getting power everywhere. If you found the video useful, please leave us a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.